You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. It's Wednesday night, time for the Paranormal Experience Radio Show with host Kat Hobson. Kick back, relax, and get ready to learn. Welcome to the show. Now, here's Kat. Welcome to Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I am so happy to be having my show tonight with my friend Shelly Burke Robertson. Shelly is, well, y'all know that she is the Friday night host here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. She's the host of Ghost Talk Radio with 187 PI, and it is one of the most informative shows ever. She covers a lot of different topics, things that fascinate her, and she's a little freaky sometimes with that, and I'm cool with that, because (laughs) (laughs) you are fascinated by all things wicked and cool. You love forensic science. You love love homicide investigations. Oh, absolutely. You're fascinated by serial killers. I am. Yeah. (laughs) And I got to tell you that sometimes that's made me nervous when we travel together, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's all good. So, you know, um, it's a fu- funny thing, not to cut you off, but it's a funny thing that just come to me talking about the serial killers and the crime shows. And there's been a few times I ask my husband, Vincent, we'll be sitting down to dinner. I'll turn on a crime show and I'll look at him and I'll say, how does your dinner taste? And he looks at me and he's like, should I be, should I be worried? <laughs> I can so see that. That's hilarious. And, you know, it's really funny because y'all are both my friends. Yeah. And we are all just freaky people together. And, uh-huh. you know, it's really funny because we had been talking at one point about how fast our friendship grew. And yes. the same is true with Vincent. Uh-huh. You know, he is every bit my friend as much as you are. And you know, y'all have been so supportive of getting this network started. He he does our um, voiceovers along with my friend Frank Lee. They're wonderful. Both of, they them do, definitely. They, both of them do a great job with those, don't you think? I do think. I just love <coughs> it. And... You know, the time put into trying to make sure that everything works. How I don't know how many months so far we've spent in Skype hours trying to make sure that the audio is good. And sometimes, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we're past that now. Yeah, but we got through it. <laughs> we did. And I think that you know, kind of having been tossed in the river by the same individual and other, you know, less than honorable things that were attempted and thwarted, yes. thank God. Yes. You know, it, it kind of brought a survivorship. It did. And you know what? I am, you have done so fantastic. I am so proud of you for for this, really. <laughs> Well, you talked me off that wall a few times when I was ready to quit, so. (laughs) But, you know, seriously, it's it's been an interesting road, but it's been when I wasn't having to pay extra for my hair color. Yeah, it's been a good one. But there were those days. Uh Uh-huh. Those moments when, you know, 
Everything was working. My mixer was set. I went to go fix David's dinner. Came back and nothing worked. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's computers and wires and, you know, everything was hardwired and that was not supposed to happen. So that was... That was a learning experience that everything computer is not necessarily written in stone. Yeah, and not exactly foolproof, right? <laughs> well, certainly, you know, not it ain't proof. <laughs> oh, I, there, I were, would... there were moments. So I think you've done fantastic. Thanks. Well, I'm just glad you stuck with me. Oh. Thanks for that. Oh, well, you're welcome, and that's what friends are for, right? It is. Support in all endeavors. It is. But I like it, too, because the honesty is there. Yes. You know, we're not afraid to sometimes just say, you know, I think that's really out there. I don't think that's <laughs> the way we need to go or... Yeah, I'll put it down to both of us working with men a lot. And, you know, and I really like that, too. I like that, too. I mean, if I get thinking some sort of way, you can, like, bring me back logically so I'm not so <laughs> rash. That's that's fabulous. <laughs> and, you know, it's really funny because my friends who know that I can go off half-wired sometimes, too, are going, wait, she does what? She prevents <laughs> rashness? I can do it with other people. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you've done it a few times for me. So, you know, make you stop and think and do the logical thing, the right thing without, you know, with some tact instead of just being crazy. Well, there's so many different ways to respond to things. And, yeah. you know, I we all cope with moments. Yes. And I'm I'm kind of in one now that I'm trying to analyze, and it'll get there, but it's just, you have to step back sometimes. <coughs> and we kind of help each other do that. So, I like that. Yeah, that's fantastic, because I need reined in sometimes. Well, you know, we've, we, we're very different personalities when it comes to emotionalism. Mm -hmm. and I don't know why it works so well. I'm glad it does. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, but one thing we love is your jail, and we both love your jail. Yes, yes. So, I, I, I love it to pieces. Um, I'm so comfortable there, and people ask me quite often you sleep up there by yourself and I'm like yeah yeah I do <laughs> a lot well and it doesn't it's not a issue I mean I sleep up there too when I'm when I can and they don't mess with me like that no no there's they're so respectful that way I think you know well, they don't mind scaring the bejesus out of you at times, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think they think it's funny. You know, I do, too. And I, I've, I've still, I've been startled in there several times. I think there'll never, that'll never go completely away. I was really startled in the basement one time. Um, I'm sorry, but that basement can be very startling. Yeah, we were in the dungeons of the basement in the tunnels, and one of the cells is open partway. Yeah. And I, I was sitting on the ledge, and we were doing a session down there, and I asked a question. And, if, and my back was towards the hole because I was sitting on the ledge in the hallway, and a female voice right in my ear, loud <laughs> from behind me from that <laughs> hole, talked in my ear after I asked a question and I it startled the heck out of me and I stood up I'm like oh <laughs> uh -uh, I'm not sitting there no more <laughs> <laughs> well you know one of the pictures I posted on the video was of the 
chair people use for EVP sessions down there in the basement. Uh huh. And that's in that open cell. And, yeah. um, you know, it's just something else down there. I, Lori Dorsey gets stuff all the time on her various electronics equipment. Oh, yes. And she, oh, she's always getting something down there. Yep. But she was, uh, she was a corrections officer in the state of Ohio for all of her career. Yes. So some of them may have heard of her. Well, I, I really think that somebody was familiar with who her husband was. Mm-hmm. That would because, me out a little. Yeah, because at one point we were up in the kitchen and Lori was talking and all of a sudden over the portal box, one of them says, how's your husband, Lori? Yeah. And, and we're like, whoa, they must know your husband, whoever was that was. also law enforcement. Yes, yep. So, well, we have a question in chat, and they want to know the very first time we met and what happened. Well, let me think the very first time that we met. Um, I know we had been at events where we were both there, but actually meeting... That may have been at the jail, huh? I think it was because I I rode up there to participate with one of the Ghost Hunt Weekends events. And that might have been when we actually really started talking and it stuff. Was. And, and, and met, yeah. Like met as real face-to-face, we're going to be friends kinds of people. Yeah, I think so. Because... Um, I had not been to that location. I'd heard so much about that location. I love having the opportunity to to experience new things. And it just blew my mind that it was so active, right? Yeah, and I think, isn't that the time where you were hushed in the basement? <laughs> I was hushed, but... Mm-hmm. You know, and I was hushed by them laying two fingers across my lips. Like yeah. you would hush a child. Yes. And they did it more than once. Because I didn't. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's the first time where we were becoming friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, because we both have a fascination with with experiencing and trying to learn what happens when we cross or at least pass from this plane to the next. Um, I, I get people's dander up all the time cause you know, I live in the Bible belt and I've come to, to feel that you don't go immediately into judgment. I like the words in red in my Bible. <coughs> And Jesus said that the only person he said, you'll be with my father today, was the the man hanging next to him. Nobody uh-huh. else got that guarantee. Well, I'll tell from you. From him. So. I don't think people go right away either. Nope. And I'm trying to get to the bottom of, you know, uh, do they have a choice? Well, what is it going to take for you to believe if they do or they don't? Well, like we were talking to Frank Tracy, and he was a murder victim across the alley from the jail. And he comes over and talks to us in the basement. And we ask him why he's still there. Why are you still here? What are you doing, you know? And he said he was still there because he did bad things. And that's what his answer was. And so he didn't elaborate or answer any more questions on that. 